Hello, friends. Well, we are already into May of 2020, and what a year it has been. At White House Custom Color, we wanted to reach out to several different people over the last oh, six to eight weeks and essentially capture where they are. Um, get the real stuff, you know, what are they, what are they thinking? What are they feeling? Um, where they're at, but then also try to give a, a positive outlook on things, some tips, some advice, um, some things that people can be doing during this time to be productive, um, without, I don't know, without, without the fluff or without the things that um, are unnecessary right now because nobody's got time for things that are unnecessary. We may have extra time, um, but we, we don't have time for junk. In fact, I think if anything, this pandemic has taught me that time is even more precious than I thought. So we wanted to, wanted to put together a series, we called it For a Time Like This, um, where people are, are sharing where they're at and what they're doing and really how they feel. And there, there are common threads, uh, but everybody's got a different take on it. So we put together kind of a best of reel, and we wanted to share that with you now. And feel free to go back through and check out our playlists on YouTube and check us out at conversation.whcc.fm. You can check out the regular podcast, This Conversation, um, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever you listen to podcasts. And let us know what you think. Let us know how you're doing. Um, you can always reach out to me at jed at whcc.com and find us on Facebook and Instagram at this convo. And I... I just wanted to say thanks for listening and that I hope that you are, are doing well, that you're safe, and that you can see a light at the end of this tunnel that we're in right now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this conversation presented by White House Custom Color. This is a time for us to, for, for one, not to be tone deaf, you know, not to be tone deaf to uh, try to take advantage over the situation. Right. right. I mean, there's a lot of folks, and I'll use hurricane as an analogy because we keep, we, we see that quite often where a disaster comes around, something happens, it's just terrible. And then there's those businesses that are tone deaf. Um, what do you mean by tone deaf? In tone deaf, they start taking advantage of the situation and trying to make money off of the event that just occurred that is terrible. I think that is, does more damage than anything. Right. So as far as, mar for example, marketing at this, during this period of time, um, I think if you're going to do any kind of marketing, it would be more of a philanthropic, more of uh, sharing maybe your why, why your brand exists and why you do what you do and share that and see if that's relatable uh, to other people, you know, in the yeah, Well, it's not, yeah. I mean, it's not like you're going to try to be booking mini sessions for the weekend, right? No. no well, I hope not because I think that <laughs> would be tone deaf, right? right. I mean, that right. would be tone deaf. Right. But I, I suspect we'll see some of that. And I suspect that's not a, long lasting, you know, vision of, uh, of what you should be doing. Cause we'll be through this, uh, and you want to get to the other side. And during that period of time, uh, you can be productive. You can be productive in, uh, you know, for example, PPA is opening up education for the next couple of weeks, free to everyone, whether you're yeah. a member or not full education. Right. So you can be sharpening your skills, whether it's marketing or your craft or whatever, uh, you and can, the, you can work on your marketing plan for the year. Yep. You know things like that. There's going to be webinars that they'll offer. Is that, that we'll is offer. the easiest way to hit that? Is it uh, bpa.com? Yes, bpa.com. We can't. It's too soon to be coming out with um, 
hey, here's what we're doing, um, he, he, get a deal. Like just scrolling, cause, and everybody's glued to social media right like, now. Like I, I haven't looked up from my phone for four days. Like I am just like, on, I'm like, what's Tim Ferriss saying? Tim Ferriss has gone dark, by the way, Tim. by the way. What's, Tim what's is Tim totally to left us hanging the holding the bag. And you know, I'm like looking at, you know, BBC News, I'm looking at Fox, I'm looking at CNN, I'm looking at, you know, I You're I are looking at I, all of it. Right. And I don't here's the thing. This is the weird thing. I, like for three years I have not watched news. Like, not even kidding, do not watch news. So, but now I'm glued to it. So I think this brought you back to the news? I know, which is not a good thing. But no. I think I'm not alone. I think a lot of people, a lot of women, a lot of our clients. Are I think on you're Instagram. right. They're, on, they're scrolling. They're trying to figure out what's going on. And when I look and I see a local business saying, hey, come in. I'm like, uh, no. Don't come in. Or, you know, whatever. But the, the cute little businesses that are like, hey, um, you know, like one, one of the gyms that I belong to, a cycle thing, said, we are closing because we want everybody to be safe. We're suspending your membership for two months and then we'll just continue, you know, continue it on for your contract. And I'm like, that is amazing. Now, is that going to hurt that business? Heck yeah, it is. But that's the first place I'm going to recommend somebody to because they're thinking about me. They're not right. thinking about themselves. Right. And so now for photographers, like how does that translate for us? You know, I'm not going to call up and say, hi, um, I'm refunding all your session fees or whatever, you know, but we are checking on our clients. Like, how are you doing? How's, you know, how's everything going? Are the kids home? You know, just one, one to one, even texting, like, how's it going? You know, that sort of thing. And then we'll pick it up when we, when, you know, when it all comes back around. But I, I just think tone is a hundred percent. We can't do, this is not a usual situation. We've got to be thinking about what what our clients would want to hear not what we want to tell them and not what we're scared about and so i want to communicate in a way that lets people know that i'm still there but i don't want it to be icky you know like right. hey by the way in honor of the coronavirus i'm offering 50 percent off <laughs> you know, everybody like, wants to avoid the icky though right everybody wants to avoid the, the, the not the everybody gross optics. no no there, i saw i saw uh, an email that was oh, from some people a, don't care no, no. Some people are intentionally being icky. Like I saw, so I, I saw something to the effect of like, this is going to kill a lot of old people. So now is the time to do this and this and this. Oh, like, make sure on. you, you know, not kidding, not kidding. That's that's a marketing piece that I saw this week. And so, what I really want to do is this. Okay, uh, we're in a position where everybody's going to be hurt financially by this. Everybody, mm -hmm. whether you are the multi-millionaire or whether you are the multi-hundredaire, a lot, like I have friends with a lot of money who've lost the price of a house in investments, who've lost yeah. a lot of money toward their retirement, and some who aren't going, are probably now aren't going to be able to retire when they thought they were because they lost that much money. But people right. who are not going to be in danger of not being able to pay their bills. So there are levels that this is affecting people. Small business owners like me uh, are going to be affected profoundly because not only does this have immediate effect, like I started my business in 2008 and that was a slow burn. Like it wasn't necessarily an instant collapse. It was a domino effect and it got worse and it got worse, but it was slower and it got better. This thing is like everybody has to stop doing business right now and stay home. This is immediate and this is damaging. And not only that, but we're also going to have to be dealing with the ramp back up after this is over. Yep. And so people are genuinely, genuinely panicked. And I'm not panicked by the idea of getting sick. I'm fine. And I will be fine. My wife, you know, no, nobody in my household is high risk. I have a sister in the UK who's got autoimmune and she's mm. at high risk. My dad's 80 and has bronchitis and, and, and a COPD. He's high risk. So there are people in my life that are high risk. My immediate family were probably fine. We've, we had a, we've got money set aside to where we'll, we'll be able to go for a few months of, of being slow before we have to start getting worried. But that doesn't mean that we're not looking to the future. Right. But there are people who are, there are people who are going to be in real trouble. And so that, and, and the financial aspect of it is probably more terrifying to some of us small business owners than the health aspect of it. And I think that that's what I've been thinking about a lot. When this settles, 
I'm going to give my big speech. We're in a V crisis. <laughs> mm-hmm. We came into this really fast and we're going to come out of it really fast, but we have to sit in this for, we don't know how long. And then, you know, predictions are anywhere from, you know, three to eight weeks. So whatever that yeah. is, we're going to sit here, but we're going to come out of it. And, you know, we've been giving, and we found this out. Somebody said this yesterday on this, this gentleman from um, England, right? Kira said this yeah. yesterday, Damon, Damien, McGill, Damien McGillicuddy. Yes. And he said, we've been given this gift of time. So, you know, that's what we're all talking about. You know, taking those, all those things we didn't have time for, we didn't have time for, we're so noisy right. and everything's so busy. All right, well, we're going to check those off our list. But for our businesses, you know, we get so busy and we, you know, we get in these patterns and and we just don't have time for all these things. Well, engaging with all of these other vendors, like, you know, if if you still photograph weddings like I do or corporate and branding and and even your, your, your existing clients, just engaging with them and checking in and, hey, what can I do? Do you need me? We're here. That's going to be, that's going to keep us at the top of their mind when we do come out of this. And, you know, me offering, you know, virtual consultations because I have a, I have a list of people that have said they definitely want to schedule a beach portrait. Well, you know what? Spring's done. Um, you know, just, okay. You know, spring's like, you know, hold my beer. And now I'm going to just shift to summer. And right. I've like already canceled my summer vacation. I probably am going to have a shorter holiday vacation yeah. or time this year. I have to double up my work to catch up from the revenue I'm missing now right. for the next several months. Right. But I'm pre pre consulting and just, just calling people and saying, Hey, I just want to touch base. Are you, how are you doing? Or I've been trying to go back in my archives and find older pictures and posting them every day, just a pretty picture Mm -hmm. and tagging my clients. And every one of them have reached out and said, you don't know how much it made me smile to see that three-year-old portrait of Jack today. Or you don't know what that meant. I love that idea. So those are things we can do that are free. Yeah. And we have the time that are just keeping us connected in our community. It's difficult when you don't have cash coming in. Um, but there's still a lot of stuff that I have to do. You know, I've got jobs that I'm finishing from other, you know, I've got weddings that I can create their albums. I can work with them and they're at home right now. So it's, it's fairly easy to start talking about albums with people. Um, it's like, there's things that we can be doing. And I think that if we just sit our hands and panic, that's the worst thing that we can do. The best thing we can do is just keep busy and, uh, you know, clean the house and clean the files and make sure that you're in, like, if you're completely caught up by the time all of this is done, that'll actually be a good thing. Right. Right. So there's silver there's, lining. Yeah. There's some silver linings in that. Yeah. You have to take a forced pause, but work as much as you can. I've been working late at night. Like I've been working all the way till I go to bed. So I've, I, I haven't stopped working and I haven't s- slowed down, but it's given me a chance to do a lot of other things. Um, I'm recording a, a, a workshop for pro photo. So things like that, I'm already, I'm still doing stuff. We had our best year ever last year, studio wise. And we said, I literally remember walking around to people around the holidays and saying, yeah, we had our best year ever and we're never doing it again. Cause it was like too much. It was, we, we broke at the end. And um, so we said we were going to go into this year and really try and throttle things back a little. And then we launched our senior model campaign and we went from what's normally 30 senior models to 40 and kind of that whole thing again, hold my beer and like, yeah, you're going to, you're going to, you thought you were going to slow down. Here you go. And then it's like the world just said, no, it's like, we're going to, so we've been working hard since, January, basically, yeah. uh, getting, we have 40 kids that we interviewed, planned the, the pre-consult thing, planned out all these sessions. Those run from February 15th to the end of April. And the breaks just got slammed this week. So we've been working up until today is our first day with where we locked the doors. And uh, so we have a lot of post work to do, a lot of editing yeah. still to happen. And that has to, like, you have to make yourself get up every day, shower, get dressed, pretend like you're going to work, so to speak. Because I think if you if you didn't, you could just end up spiraling into the world of depression and and 
once we come out of this, because we will come out of this, you still need to make sure that your business is as successful as it can be. I kind of let my my 2020, the plans I had for 2020, right? Like I had to let, I kind of had to let them mourn. I was less prepared for it than other of my friends. You know, you talked to Mary Sus Taylor and she's like, yeah, my 2020 was down to the minute, right? Like I'm not quite like that, but I had big plans for 2020. And I had to let those kind of die and put those aside in a saltine box and just put them over in the recycling, you know? But so then this week, Carol and I said, all right, so we need to do something positive with our days. And it doesn't have to be something as gigantic as work on the business for eight hours, right? right? Like, because that's just silly. Like you, you you're going to burn out fast and hard yeah. and they're not good eight hours. And so, I broke it down to saying, all right, I need to do 30 minutes of exercise. So, Jed, exercise is when you move your body that doesn't involve eating, okay? Um, I know we've talked about this before, but it's actually physically doing something <laughs> without this, okay? <laughs> now, I also, let me move on because, because I also mourn the fact that I was going to start a buffalo wing and fried chicken blog this year, Okay. <laughs> I wanted you so bad. And Carol said to me, don't you dare. I'm like, well, that would be a great reason to do it is because I travel around. I, hot wings are my blood type, you know, like, uh, <laughs> you know, chicken wings are communion, like all that stuff, uh, you know, <laughs> going to work out for me. But this was not my year. No, so uh, gonna apparently do, not. I'm going to do 30 minutes of exercise every day. I'm going to work. Uh, so I'm getting ready to three photographic competition cases ready. For districts, so I'm going to spend an hour a day just on competition images, not six straight hours. I'm going to do an hour, like mm. to set it aside and do an hour. I'm going to work on an hour on a home project. Again, not eight hours where I'm going to try to paint the exterior of the house today. I'm going to mm. do something on my house or involving my life, my personal life, for an hour. And I'm going to um, spend an hour on a studio project. And then I'm going to try to spend one hour learning something I don't know. Totally, which is very Mary Ellen, if you've ever, Mary Ellen Mark was her name, I don't think I said that yet, and she's pretty amazing. She was, I think Hasselblad, or American Photo named her like one of the most influential oh, yeah. female photographers. She's yeah. a big deal. Check her out. If you have never seen her work, take a look at it. It's really amazing. Well, and you were so, saying she had a, well, keep going with this story, because I want to. Anyway, so I interviewed her, and she had photographed Mother Teresa, who at the time, you know, as a Christian kid, was like, whoa. Yeah. And so I remember yeah. saying to her, how do you photograph famous people? people and not lose your mind like how do you and she said every this is this is by the way my imitation of her which is approved by her husband so it's okay um every head is an object light the object take the photo don't be amazed and i was like okay like she had great advice just pearls of wisdom that is, right. that's honestly though that's that's also pretty good advice it's great advice yeah, for real. don't 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 be amazed right light the object don't Move be on. amazed like light the object yeah perfect and so anyway i uh said to her at the end of this interview, I'm like, hey, can I call you back if I have more questions, which I should have known was going to be a no. And she said to me out loud, I'm never speaking to you again. If you ever want to ask a question, ask it now. This is your moment. That's <laughs> and the so best. I said to her, I know it's probably also would have been true, except that then what I said was, everyone thinks you're this really famous, like serious photographer, but I think you have a sick sense of humor and it comes out in your photographs. There was this moment and she goes, oh my God, nobody gets that. You get me. Come work for me. Come to New York. Come work for me. And that was it. I went from, I'm never speaking you again <laughs> to 10 seconds later, move to New York City and come work for the your favorite photographer in the whole world. I'm finding out that a lot of people are, you know, they go, they're only good for a couple of weeks. And isn't that, isn't that something else? And I'm like, I think that that's not uncommon. I don't know. Oh, that's most of Americans. Yeah. Live paycheck to paycheck. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. And the whole boot camp thing, you know, maybe this is all, um, like you said, a wake up call that we weren't as prepared as we thought we were. Or maybe we need to think about that when we're done. Right. Um, and I think more so than just being prepper style prepared, you know, with supplies and that kind of stuff. I'm not right. talking about that. I'm talking about emotionally mentally, yes. spiritually prepared yes you know yeah. when when the crap hits the fan right how are you going to react you know that's what character is is what what you are in the dark and when the dark comes out how do you behave you know you, you get to see who's who truly is in touch with their their center right when stuff goes bad you know what do people do 
I'm in my studio, you know, that I had for a lot of years and I'm going through the things that, you know, my friends in the industry are going through right now. What do I want to hear? Right. Like, what, what is going to help me? And, you know, I'm trying to just be um, a listening ear and, you know, everybody, um, just like Allison said, you know, everybody's dealing with this at a different rate, Yeah. you know, and some people are very positive about it. Some people are very impacted by it. Some people are um, moving ahead. Some people are sitting where they're at, you know, and, and I just do a lot of listening. Yeah. Do you think that maybe that's the case right now for a lot of people? I, I think I hear what you're saying and I've, and I've experienced it myself that with, with a lot of people considering the different stages of this that we're at, sort of like the different stages of grief, we've covered that. Yeah. But do you think that for a lot of people right now, we're not at the stage where we're ready to plan and give advice and really jump out and like see this as the opportunity for which it may be, but we're yeah. really still at the stage where listening is the best thing that we can do for a lot of people right now. So when people are like, Oh, you know, lean in or be there for your neighbor. Maybe all that requires at this point is just reaching out and saying, all right, I'm here. Go, (laughs) you know, like give me everything you have. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, listening to listen, not listening to respond. Yes. Oh, thank you for that. You know, I've been, um, I've been telling a lot of the people that follow me and, you know, like a lot of my um, other photographers or even other people that aren't photographers, but they're just kind of business people and they want tips. Um, I've been, what I've really been talking about and, and teaching a lot of people lately is to just stay relevant and to stay active and stay in front of your audience. Mm. Because at the end of the day, every single day that passes, that we don't post something on our social media, we aren't active, we're not connecting with our audience, or we're not, you know, giving them something to think about or give them something to, you know, stay in front of them, they forget about us. Right. And every single day, I kind of, I've been describing it kind of like a heel. So like every single day that you don't post something, it's, you just go a little bit further down the hill. And it makes it a little harder to, to, to go back up that hill eventually if you don't continue to do it every day. And somebody was like, well, Matt, like they can't book a session or, you know, I can't go cut hair or I can't do any of that right now. I'm like, that's okay. But you still stay connected with your audience. You still want to stay in front of them and remind them that you're still here so that when this is over and it will be over, they are still going to be interested in what you do and they're still going to want to come to you. Right, so because everybody's at home right now. Everybody's at home right now consuming it anyway. So other people are getting to them. Yeah. And if you don't stay in the mix, you you could get you could get lost. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, like I have I've been posting every single day like it's not even a thing. You yeah. know, I'm not posting about coronavirus issues. I'm not talking about political issues. I'm not talking about those things because people are already so worried and so like right you know, dwelled on this, that that's not something that I want to talk about. And and I want to continue to encourage people. And I want people to be continued to, you know, see that light at the end of the tunnel. For you personally, you said your first reaction, and I have not heard someone put it this way. This is the first time I've heard this term used. You said surrender. And for whatever reason, that comes across beautifully to me in this scenario, when a lot of times I would I would look at that word as, as, okay, I give up, I'll do whatever I give up, but it's not, you're, you're not giving up. It's like a, you're obeying for the common good. Is that how you see it when you use that term? Um, yeah, I think I see it as, you know, part of it is just a, a sort of a pragmatic approach in terms of, okay, what action can I take? So here's the action I can take. I can also sit and hamster wheel and, you know, figure out what can I do this? Can I do that? What if I did this? Maybe I'll do that. But I, I realized, you know, I think I started doing some of that before, before that yeah. thing that I told you about. Yeah. And I realized none of those things make any sense. I don't feel like that's a good use of my mental energy. I think it's going to make me a bit crazy if yeah. I try, you know, frantically chasing my tail to, you know, to take action that may or may not be appropriate or, and that's the other piece of it is, you know, who who am I to make decisions about trying to, trying to keep my, my, um, you know, high end fine art business open. 
during, <laughs> during a time when maybe my energy is required elsewhere. Maybe I need to, you know, mm. how, can I, how can I help my community? How can I help my clients on, on a human level? You probably know a lot of people that are kind of on the front lines right now, don't you? I do. Actually, a lot of my clientele, um, the moms are nurses. And so I've been reaching out to them, talking to them, asking if they may have masks. I know there's a couple of vendors um, that do maternity or like newborn props, and they're trying to make mask covers. Um, my mother-in-law works for a hardware store um, in Sonoma County. And so she she's able to get a little bit of masks here and there. So I'm having her try to send some up to me so I can send them to some of my clients and just do what I can, little things. Consider like you were just talking about the news and how hard it is to watch the news, but yet it's kind of a necessary evil sometimes too. Right. With with your friends that are kind of on the front line, what sense do you get from them with all of this going on? Oh, <laughs> um, one of them last night told me that she just prays every day that she doesn't bring it home to her, to her husband, her husband and child. And that, you know, she's having to stay away from her um, parents and her grandparents and, you know, it takes a toll. I mean, I'm having to do that too. My grandfather is in a, um, a care home and so I can't go see him mm. uh, at all right now. And I have, um, you know, a family member who is um, in hospice right now. We can't, and we can't go say goodbye. So there's a lot of things that this is affecting, you know, but on, on the bright side of things, we do have technology. We are able to like what you and I are doing right now and be and yeah. to be able to connect with people in a different way. And it's a whole different way of learning for us because we're so used to um, hugging and touching and, and, you know, being face to face that this is just a little bit of a different way to be face to face. Have faith and wait it out because yeah. it will get better. And it's, I was just thinking, you know, it's just going to be kind of an ugly recovery. Like it's going to be harsh, like no doubt about it. And I mean, right now I feel good because all my bills have been paid for um, April. Mm -hmm. But, you, and I was like, God, am I going to be feeling different at the end of April? Because you know, like, yeah, I don't, I don't have a big, huge pile of money saved right. in my bank, but right. um, I know that you, we, everything, you just have to take it day by day and not think about three weeks from now. Just day by day, because life is changing rapidly. Everyone in the entire world is in this together. There is no difference for, I mean, I guess the Chinese are ahead of us and the Italians are ahead of us. Sure. But we are all experiencing this together. So we just have to be patient, have faith, keep your mind busy, um, take care of everything on your to-do list, stay calm, because this this um, COVID thing has never obviously happened to me, but every year this kind of slowness always happens to me. Right. For a month and a half to actually, in the past, it was April, May, and part of June, I would sit and I wouldn't have any work and it was very scary and very painful. And at the end, I'd like freak out. But then finally, when I was just about to think I was gonna die, the phone started ringing. Yeah. But so I've learned I, I can't put myself through that stress. And so it's kind of like, I'm kind of used to this business-wise, not, you know, what's really happening. So I'm like patience and take care of everything we need to do and also spend some time being creative. You turn the news on and you're like, we're all gonna die, right? Yeah. Um, my business is gonna fail. My, my kids aren't gonna graduate. My, they're not gonna go back to college. Like you can just tell yourself so many stories that put you in that downward spiral oh, yeah. and on that side of the negative emotional scale. And so that's really where we started with everybody doing the work of look, here's the fact. You're homebound right now. You're, you know, like separating the fact from the story you're telling right. yourself and then tell yourself a different story. Look for proof of a different story. Look, there are people who have gotten through this before. As a country, in a world, we've gotten through things like this before and people still need what we have. And so first, I think it's getting yourself in an emotional space where you're ready to then go tactical, like strategic and tactical. So you know, not operating, you know, it's state mastery really, right? Like you get it as a business person, especially a creative. Like when I go into a session at four o'clock on Friday after a long week, it's like, and it's a high school senior. And I tell myself, okay, this is this kid's one session. I got to get in state, mm. right? Yeah. Listen to music, look at images. Um, when we are going into a sales presentation, we're in a different state, right? We're like in a certain point of serving, 
Um, we have everything clean. Like I really want to make sure I'm tight on my presentation that I'm giving everything I have to my clients. So like, it's a different kind of state we have to get in. And I think in this time when we're sort of pausing our client interaction, especially in different you know places, some people are able to sell online from past sessions. Yeah. Like I have students yeah. making a lot of money right now doing that. Yeah. Right. But um, getting ourselves in in a different state, like this is a new normal, right? This is a new normal. So um, something that hit our community really hard this week that we didn't see kind of coming was. Um, that, you know, all the schools sent the kids home yeah. and gave them kind of week to, to get the, the teachers to get it together. And now the kids are expected to have the computer and they have one computer in the home and they got four kids needing that computer that mom or dad is working on. Right. Also and, that. Yeah. And the kids are fighting with the three-year-old who's like, I want to do it. And like, so you're homeschooling and you're trying to work and there's, it's just, it's hard to manage that state, right? So again, we go back to, we can't get tactical with this until we figure out what's going on up here. Erring on the side of caution for me has just been something that we're integrating. And honestly, one of my concerns is on the other side of this, am I gonna be able to like not have it turn into OCD? You know, I, like, <laughs> how, I wash my hands all the time now. <laughs> like, I just thought constantly about that too. Like, how obsessed. Like, Are we gonna be able to come out of this okay? Like. <laughs> My thing is, am I going to be able? Am I going to be able to get out of my jammy and get on with the day? Is truly the question that I'm wondering because I have them on right now. I have a normal shirt on top, but I definitely have jammy pants below. So do so I. Like, am I going to be? Am I going to be able to shower and get ready for the day so, and see so clients? Like, is that even going to be a possibility? I know oh that's my a gosh. I have clients still. But, well, you know, I think, well, maybe they're just going to show up in their pajamas too. Like it's just, you know, gonna, maybe we should all just do that. We'll society as a whole, the dress code for society is just going to be lowered. I enacted downtime for the first time ever. Do you know what that is? <gasps> yes. Isn't that I amazing? did it. 11 Dude, to six. Yes. Can't use it. 11 to six. Can't it. use it. And what's interesting is I'm finding out how powerful that is because there have been many times where I'm not even, you know, I'm not paying attention to the time. I don't even know what time it is right now. And I'm who knows what day sort or of year. thinking it's Thursday. I think it is Thursday, <laughs> but it's interesting. I'll be on my phone. And it'll say five minutes until I'm like, oh, oh yeah. And normally who knows how long I would have been on that yeah. phone checking things late into the so, night. Yeah, Not I'm just news, you know, I'm into the, I'm into the book. I'm creeping on Insta. I, yeah. I'm doing all the things, but that keeps me up. And right now, I need to have sleep and be healthy to yes. be the be the best man that I can for my yeah. wife, for my kids, for myself, right? Yep, because that may be the only thing that you can do right now is just get this amount of sleep <laughs> and just hang on, white knuckle it. Okay, but yeah. So you were a mess last week. What, what changed? How come you're not a mess this week? Maybe so, you are. I don't know. Well, no, yeah, no, I'm okay. I put on makeup today. I was like, I should probably shower and wash my hair for Jed. Um, I showered. I, I did. I don't. People are gonna be like, Amanda Holloway is homeless now. Look at her. She <laughs> is not okay. <laughs> my wife but, even you know, asked me, did you shower? I was like, really? I, you have to ask? You, yeah. you got to ask? Yeah. But I think showering once a day. Thumbs up. <laughs> gotta like, do it. Give yourself a sticker. You know, it, I think... Um, and everyone was like, get dressed. And I'm like, I'm not, I don't, I don't get dressed normally. I'm in my PJs all day. So go ahead with that. Um, but like not sticking to your phone constantly. And I even had a, my very good friend, Dan, we are very political based. And so we text each other like political articles and we're like, Oh my God, look at this. And I was like, Dan, we got to stop because it's, I'm falling down the hole. Um, and yeah. so we found the other thing. Oh gosh. Yeah. And so, um, but like, and for me, baking is my therapeutic mm. outlet. And mm. so I told myself, I said, okay, because there are things right now that I can do for three hours at a time that will earn me money in the future. And yeah. I said, okay, I've got to sit down and work for three hours, mm -hmm. no TV, no internet. I'm just going to work for three hours, create content, whatever you want to do. And then if I do that, I get to bake. Primarily video content. Yeah. A lot, the, that uh, the last two big projects that I worked with the team um, we can kind of touch on how I was doing that too, if you want to, but I would like to, cause it segues into what I'm, what I wanted to talk to you about yeah. as well with you is the video aspect of things. So go ahead and dive in. Yeah. So for the, the testimonial one, that was basically just them talking about their experience. I had a few different prompts and then I'm just going to edit that together. Probably mainly use it as an IGTV piece of content. 
Because mm-hmm. um, right now, photographers should all be putting out content. Yeah. And there's a difference between, I think a lot of people get confused when they hear the word marketing and they think sales hmm. versus actually marketing. Because what marketing is, is marketing is telling essentially, it's a, a way to communicate your brand message through whether that be um, explain, really there are kind of three pieces of content. So it's education, connection, and communication. And so those three pieces, essentially what I've been doing is really focusing on what content can I create that hits those three pillars. Yeah. It's not book now. It's not, um, mm. you know, if you book today, you get a free grad card set or 50% off your session fee or whatever. That's not, that's sales. So what well, I've but been- the marketing message is also very low pressure as well. It's not- yes. It's not like a huge call to action that you need to take advantage of during this time. You're essentially putting yourself out there that way too. So your attitude with your clients, you know, that are actually helping you put together this message is actually very similar to the message itself. Is that right? Yeah. In its its, its feel. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And and so that's mainly been the approach is, is, you know, that testimonial thing is not only a way for your clients to be part of the brand, because this generation loves to create with you. Yeah. If you give them the opportunity to create, yeah. they jump all over it. That's yeah, why everyone that's wants true. to be a, their, the next YouTube star. It's why everyone right. wants to be, right. you know, TikTok famous. It's, right. That's right. this generation is they want to create and they want people to consume that, that content. And so by giving them a chance, that really puts them in alignment with your brand values. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the forced slowdown for you has been something that you're embracing. You kind of like it. Um, I like it. It's different. And of course it has its own challenges too, Mm -hmm. but I feel much more peaceful than I was feeling before. Cause I was feeling like things were just, I was going here. I was going there. I was doing this. I was being a mom. I was, you know, trying to, juggle everything yeah and um now i'm still juggling everything but i'm doing it from one spot oh i see so you're you're not moving around everything else is still moving and yeah there's a lot of moving parts yeah but now you're grounded in one spot to kind of manage it all right what does that look like from both of your perspectives really i don't know (laughs) Uh, both Jody and I are, are besides Jody owning and running Jody Real Photography, and I'm helping in the office. We're also teaching full time um, at uh, at a school, as, at, at a, a high, high school. school, a private high school. So um, we are still doing lesson plans. We're still meeting students every day. Um, we just don't have to go an hour and a half in the morning and an hour and a half at night after over the, after those hours to. Um, to deal with it. So we actually have, it seems like we have more time to be with family, to take care of other stuff, make sure we have time to go work out and then also to um, deal with editing and photo shoots and, you know, well, photo shoots aren't happening, (laughs) rescheduling photo shoots and social media and revamping the website and all that stuff. So are you meeting with students online then? Mm -hmm. Yeah. On zoom actually. Yeah. 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 We're using so, Zoom, and then we have um, a lot of just regular lessons. They still have – it's a lot of independent learning on their side, but mm-hmm. we have to be available for them to um, ask questions and email. and Great, great papers, give responses, yeah. have discussion boards. Well, well, before we get started, though, because I've actually – this is funny, but I've actually watched a couple of your episodes. Oh. And, and I've, seen, I've seen it progress, you know, the set you've got going on back here, because <laughs> – when it first started, it was like a thing out of Tiger King. You know, have you seen that that show yet? His little set he's got. Set? Yeah, I was like, what on earth is going on? And all of a sudden, I can't sing as good as that dude, though. Yeah, well, neither can he. It's all fake. <laughs> um, so anyway, I'm like, huh, oh, Vicky must have had something to do with this. And sure That's enough, what I, I heard she did. things she get did. added. Like the more I look, things get added, bits and pieces <laughs> back there. I'm like, oh, this looks good. And then um, she was mortified. She was like, you can't do that. And I was like, I need, this is what I'm supposed to do right now. We're just going to, we're not going to worry about it right now. It's only going to be, we'll only do a couple of them and it won't be that big of a deal. <laughs> and then it, that wasn't the case. And then she, 
she one night she just tore everything up and she painted the walls and she came she's like I painted everything what do you think and I was like it's it's a lot better and then you know White House is like let Vicky do whatever she wants to do you know what you need though you know remember those Seinfeld episodes where he had like a Superman on each episode yeah. <laughs> you need like a little Easter egg in there so well, there's like, a there's a <laughs> That's a Darth. That's a Darth Vader. All right, all right. Right there, he's in the corner. I just noticed. It's funny. I just noticed him right before you came on. I was looking at my frame, and I was like, "Oh, you can see Vader back there." So there you go. You gotta have that. There's, there's your Easter egg. I have been trying to not necessarily give resources and feel like I need to just produce content that's helpful when I see other people doing it so well. Um, so instead of being the one that's producing the content to be helpful and kind of like attack the problem aggressively, I've been sharing resources that I found helpful from other places. Mm. Um, so I'm definitely still trying to provide resources, but I don't want to um, add to the noise is basically what right. I kind of my thought process is there's, you know, 50 billion incredible influencers and business owners right. and companies that are providing amazing resources. I would rather promote the resources that are existing that are helpful to me um, than try to create my own and kind of drown out the other people. Um, and I'm also, I'm blessed in the fact that I am not going to struggle financially through this because of how my business is set up from a passive income standpoint. Right. So I would rather point people to towards the business who might struggle financially. Um, and so I've been trying to point people towards those resources, but without feeling like I need to strain myself and research and pretend I'm a professional on this and find out all these legal things um, when I don't necessarily know them. And I'm not necessarily somebody who would be a great fit for that. Um, but there are people that are creating content that's phenomenal and I'd rather push that. I have no idea what it must be like for you in New York City right now. So can you tell me a bit? Well, I mean, there's so many different levels as to what it's like here in New York City right now. And like my immediate world right now is uh, whilst you're in the middle of Illinois, in the middle of cornfields, I'm sure you're also in a very big house with a yard and these certain things. <clears throat> I live in a junior one bedroom, which is essentially one room. Imagine like the biggest, well, not the biggest even, <laughs> imagine like a suite in a hotel. That's what I live in. It's a studio um, apartment, right? Yeah, it, yeah. It's a little bigger than a studio. I, I kind of have sort of, sort of two rooms and a separate kitchen and bathroom. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's essentially that. So it's very different in that I can't go to another room. I can't, right. like my desk, my lounge room is, my, my couch is here. My bed, there's a reason I've got the, the right. laptop turned this way. My bed is there and I don't want right. to be in that. Right. Um, thankfully, I can maybe turn this around. I have a fire escape. Oh, and an, and a view. And and people out my, well, houses out my window. So I'm like, the great fondness I have for that little, it's literally a three foot square piece of outdoor area. That you um, can actually go out on, yeah. Yeah, so it's different. Like isolation here is very much, uh, I also live on my own, as do many New Yorkers. Right. So uh, thankfully at Animoto, we've had a cameras on policy. So any meeting that we have, everyone has to put their camera on, no matter what time of day, no matter what they're looking like, oh, anything like that. Oh, that just oh. means that we get to see faces, that we get to interact with the people still and feel a little bit, you know, of that closeness. Um, but that, that's my immediate world. Outside of my apartment, uh, it's, I, I, I really felt it last night. It's a shell of the city that it usually is. I find that honesty and vulnerability even very refreshing. Yeah. Um, especially when it when it seems genuine, which in your case it certainly does. For you to say, say, say it, say it to me how you said it again. Uh, as far as, I, yeah, I'm just I'm a better mom when I work. You're a better mom when yeah. you work. Unpack yeah. that for me. I'd like to know a little bit more about that myself. Yeah, I, I find myself to be more patient, less, I, I get frustrated less. I'm just in a better mood when I've had some time to do the things that I love doing that don't involve constantly caring for someone else. Right. And I don't know, I mean, I had kids later in life. My first I had at 39 and my second at 41. So they're almost four and almost two now. So I was used to kind of doing what I wanted when I wanted. We're in the, the same, time. we're in and the same boat. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Almost so you exactly. And had, really? Yeah. So you and Vicky had kids later. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yes, we did. Yeah. So you know, you know, I was used to 
it, and that was intentional. I mean, I, we sort of rolled the dice hoping that I could still get pregnant right. as, you know, right. older. Right. And we really are very fortunate that that was able to happen. And the reason I waited so long is because I love what I was doing. My business was like my baby. <laughs> I loved it. I loved working. Oh, man. And I was. But I've had a couple kids that have really surprised me. I think my girl, actually, let me read it. My girl that I posted yesterday that's still on there, she really kind of surprised me. She said, I've learned that I'm a very social person who misses my friends, mm -hmm. but I have loved this time to relax and enjoy the presence of my family. I that's, was from like, wow. a, that's from a senior girl? Yeah. That's beautiful. I was like, wow. So some of them have really shocked me. Yeah. Um, but seniors like to be famous. So they like that they're getting featured. Right. Right. You no, know, it's, but I think just keeping them interact, you know, interacting with them. Yeah. I've, I've enjoyed their answers. Their moms have enjoyed the answers. The seniors have enjoyed doing it. So with Jeff and I, I mentioned, we tried to start having a family back when we bought our uh, commercial business and launched our associate brand in 2012. Well, that journey was actually a five-year journey to have our son James. And so we went through a pretty, you know, painful and, and, you know, grief stricken journey of, of having him. We went through several miscarriages. At one mm. point we were told that we weren't going to be able to get pregnant on our mm. own. And so that was a period where I experienced the same kind of anger I'm angry at my circumstances. Why is this huh. happening to me? And I experienced a lot of victim mindset throughout that. And during that journey, I, um, we got a life coach. I went through a lot of mentorship and I went through a lot of self-work that opened my eyes to how much of a victim I was being in my own life. And so that, those lessons kind of came front and center for me when this whole COVID thing started happening. And I was just like, okay, I could either choose, like what I can control is my choice in this. So I can either choose to continue to be angry and continue to shut down and be mad, which is what I want to do because that feels great right now. Um, <laughs> yeah. I can choose to do that, but I'm going to create, I mean, pardon the expression, but I'm going to create a living hell for myself. Like this okay. is going to be a horrible, horrible experience. And who knows how long it's going to be. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be two weeks? Is it going to be six months? Right. I can choose to do that or I can choose to learn what I can learn because of the situation. All this found time that we have, right? So yeah. I see that you've decided to fill it with things that are actually good for you because I see all the memes where everyone's like, I'm filling my time by eating extra chocolate bars or <laughs> watching 74 sure. hours of Netflix every week, right? But You've chosen yoga. Well, that's only an hour out of my day. <laughs> yes, yeah, so the rest, the rest is the rest is Netflix. Yeah, Netflix and editing, and you know, I we're it's so Jed. For the longest time, our business has been kind of a well-oiled machine, and I keep saying yeah. this on all these zooms that we've been doing lately. Yeah, I have, I, I, I have not neglected our business by all means. I mean, we service our clients really really well and we do a really good job at but i have neglected our website i've neglected our social media accounts i stopped social media about a year ago on mm -hmm. instagram and I, I keep up with facebook pretty well but you know our website hasn't been touched in three years and so now i'm, I'm going back and i'm going through and redesigning it and, and you know getting our ducks in a row so that when this does open up again you know, that something new and exciting, yeah. you know, to share. Because if you think about it, um, especially for photographers that are starting out or have been in the business for a long time and they haven't done what, you know, done what we've done and not service their uh, website and taken care of it, is that when new brides go to your website, they're not seeing any of their friends. <laughs> oh, seeing, because it's know, old content. It's old content yeah. and it's beautiful content. And I love our yeah. website, right. um, but it needs to be updated. And, and thankfully, you know, we have a good word of mouth 
going right now, but right. it is nice to be able to get that all up and running again and take the time to do that. And, Thanks for yeah. your time to, to do this with me. I, I would like to speak to you more when we're on the other side and, and when we are going out to dinner and when we are seeing people in public and when I get to hug my mom again, it will be nice to do this yeah. again with you sometime. I would love that, Jed. I always like seeing you. Anytime I see you at a conference or whatever, it's just, you're just such a great guy. People really like you a lot. <laughs> They really do. Like, people say really nice things about you behind oh. your back. I hope you know that. Well, I, that makes me very happy. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> good, I will see I'm you glad. next time then. Thanks again. Yep, sounds good. Take care. Say hi to Vicki. I will. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching this conversation presented by White House Custom Color on YouTube. Be sure to check out our other content and click that subscribe button right there. Right. <laughs> right there. It's there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs>